Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, this is Scrapman, bringing you another episode of Scrap Mechanic, and today we are back in the flooded world, and this is the real flooded world. I have built the official world that we are going to be using to show off all of your actual creations, planes, boats, vehicles, uh, huts, or whatever island things, island-based things that you guys may have come up with. So, um... We're going to focus on boats for this episode, I think, and we're going to use these boats to explore this new flooded world. Now, if you look around, you might notice that there's a lot more open water than there previously was. That's because I listened to your feedback and um, we have a lot less islands, a lot less things uh, taking up the water space. So we have a lot more underwater based things, a lot more just open space as well, like empty sea floor, like you can see below me right now. And uh, yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be a good episode. This is the official start of the world itself, rather than just building the world like we've done in the previous few episodes. So as expected, I did have to be a lot more selective with the tiles since I didn't want it to be too overcrowded with just land masses everywhere. So I did have to make some sacrifices, even islands that I did want to put in here, um, I couldn't put everything that I wanted to. So we're going to be exploring what we have left. And uh, the first thing we're looking at is this awesome little life raft uh, that we have here. Now this is by somebody who I can't figure out their name right now because I have to be able to put a lift down to do that. All right, hold on, we can do this. All right, so this is by LFT Chasma, and this is uh, a raft with oars. It's actually pretty cool, and now it's stuck up there. Okay. Well, the good news is that uh, the sea floor is is shallow enough that I can use my lift to grab any item on the surface. But the problem is now getting into it. I'm gonna have to put it off the lift and then get into the seat really, really quick. All right here we go. Eh. All right, nailed it. So this is his life raft, and it's actually really cool. Uh, the only the only downside is that the controllers aren't aren't uh, as fast as we would like them to be, but that's because they have a, a maximum limit that's not really that fast at all. So if we press both oars here, you can see we just start slowly swimming along. And actually, it's not that slow. This is really effective. Like if you just look off to the side there, you can even see the dust particles moving across. Like it's it moves at a raft's pace. So I really like it. And if I hold down on one side, you can see it actually turns me. I could just, it's a very slow process, but I can turn gradually to one side, which is nice. And then we can, um, oh, it just corrected me going back this way. But yeah, then we could just go ahead and paddle our way to wherever we want to go. So this is not the most efficient way of getting around, but it is definitely a very well done and unique way of getting around. And I think it fits the whole flooded world theme very well, considering it's a life raft. So let's go ahead and spawn in some other things. I think we should actually, you know what? Let's get over, let's get over to this debris over here and uh, let's jump on some of this debris like a stranded person lost at sea. And then we can see if we can spawn something from there. Although with the, the, the asset glitches, the way that the terrain works now, that might not work since we can't really put things down on assets. All right, here we go. We've made it over. Now let's see if we can we can actually walk across the ore over to this thing. All right, so now can we put... Oh, we actually can. We can put something on this asset. That's great. Let's see what else we have from you guys. All right, let's stick with the uh, paddle boat theme and see how this one works. This is called Scrapman Boat. Uh, this is by It's Your Boy Oof. <laughs> and let's build this thing and uh, see if we can get this thing to fall into the water without flipping over. You know what? I'm just going to jump down with it, and we're going to hope that it, uh... Nope, it's going to be upside down. We need to find an island. We need to go to that island over there so we can have e an easier time of this. All right, here we go. Now we actually have a deserted island, and we can spawn our craft in here. Okay, so apparently three is to go forward. All right. Um, I think the oars are going in the wrong direction. Yeah, those oars are going in the wrong direction. All right, well, that doesn't make a whole lot of sense, but we could turn left and right, no problem. And what does number four do? Oh, number four is reversed. Now it makes sense. Now it makes sense. Now we're actually going in the correct direction. All right. All right, so that's a nice compact and uh, very gentle and relaxing kind of boat. Let's check out something a little bit bigger now. All right, check this thing out. This is a boat by Litcher Hunt. 
and it seems to it sits really well on the water here. We even got a duck up at the front. And uh, this looks like it'd be a good boat for cargo. Like you can some, put some things on here, carry them around, transport them. Let's see how fast it goes. All right, we're just gonna press W here and um, very slow going, very slow going, it turns. I, I was expecting a little bit more speed out of this. Let's see, what are the buttons? Number one, I'm not sure. Number two, number three. I don't see these things doing it. Maybe those are like, Oh, they're different gears. Look at this. That's really cool. So we have like super slow and then we can put it in another another gear and we can put it in another gear. So this is actually, this is really cool now. All right. I was a little bit worried that it was going to be a super slow boat, but this is actually a really stable speed here. Man, look at this. This is awesome. Now that I'm like floating over all of like the underwater terrain and stuff, all of the little little rocks and here's a shipwreck over here. This is really starting to put the world into perspective about what we actually have here, what we've actually put together. By the way, I don't, I don't, I think I forgot, but I want to thank you guys because this is, this is our world now. This is the world that we built as a community. We've all coordinated together. All of these tiles fit within one another. We've all used the same colors. We've all used the same type of uh, textures and stuff with our islands and our seafloor and it's looking great like look at this place all right so over here I remember building um, I was trying to make things make sense as much as I could but over here is kind of like the sea monster area so you can see we got like this kraken tile there we got these this is where like, the sea serpent and the giant fish are we have like the blue the big blue hole oh no I put that in the wrong way I can I can modify that though I forgot that the blue hole had an opening on one of the sides and I left the opening way in the back. Although maybe we could just use it as like a secret opening. I totally overlooked that, but I tried to make everything as easily accessible as possible. But look at, actually this isn't too bad. It's kind of like a secret opening, right? I don't know. I think it would have been better if the opening was over there, but I think I can still modify that and then just the world will just automatically update. Uh oh, am I really stuck against the wall here? Okay, yeah, so we have this, like, this giant kraken tile with the mystery tree. And, um, then over here we've got the, the squid tentacles coming out of the water. And then we also have the kraken attack that is, uh, attacking this boat. And, yeah, so this is kind of like the danger area. Danger zone. What is this? Is this a sea life tile? I forget what this is. This might just be a random tile that I put here. Oh, yeah, we got, like, a, some weird thing down there as well. All right, so I think let's uh let's dock our boat on this island here. There we go, nailed it. And let's spawn in another one and explore some more. All right, so this is supposed to be like a survival boat by Zeno. I will figure stuff out. Didn't even bother to put the controls in here. So let's see how big is this thing gonna be? Oh, I can't even find a spot to spawn it. All right, here we go. What if I just put it right there and spawn it in? Okay, looks like it's... <laughs> is that a spuddling gun on it? Why is there a spuddling gun on this thing? That's a little excessive. All right, so this is apparently a crazy survival boat. Let's uh, let's start pressing buttons here. Ooh, that's a cool little hatch. It goes to the flooded engine room. This is great. <laughs> All right, looks like it uses some, some thruster controls. Let's go ahead and close our flooded engine room. No, no problems there, I'm sure. All right, we got, uh, oh, the captain's seat. All right, let's see if we can drive this thing around now. Oh, look at all those collisions happening. All right, well, it turns well. I'm pretty sure that's the thruster turning, though. All right. Yeah, that does not look right. I mean, it's a little it's a little finicky when it comes to that stuff there. Let's start, let's start pressing buttons and see what happens. Number one, closes the door. Number two, opens that hatch. Uh, all right, let's stop for a sec. Press number three. Oh, we got our spotlight. We can turn our spotlight back and forth. That's cool. A spotlight is a is a is a nice feature. Number four and five. Oh, now we can move it up and Oh, we can move it up. And then we have our horn. Alright, so let's uh let's drive over to I think this is the volcano island with the smoke plume coming out of it. I really like that. And I also intentionally put that near like the monster area because this is just like the danger area overall. So of course the volcano is gonna be in that area as well. 
So let's head over to the volcano. We'll uh, park this boat there and then we'll spawn in another boat and continue on our exploration of the flooded world. Actually, I just realized that there's a crane in the back with its own separate controls. I'm going to check that out too. All right, let's go on back here. Can we jump up like this? All right, awesome. And here we go. Let's press some buttons. Okay, number one. Extends the crane. Number two. Oh, extends it even further. Number three. How far does this crane go? Number four. Okay, and then number five closes it. All right, so... Oh, and then we can use WASD to kind of turn it around here. The only thing is that it looks like it's it's not built for taking things out of the water. It's built for uh, taking things off the surface of the water. So it doesn't go down like under the water, but it does seem to just get to the surface right there. So then you can just grab whatever it is, bring it on back, carry it on over here. What happened to the arms? Carry it on over here and then drop it on the spuddling gun. Let's actually get into the spuddling gun for old time's sake. <laughs> we can hit the crane thing. Look at that. All right, let's go ahead and remove this thing and see what other kind of boats we're going to be looking at today. All right, this looks like a really nice compact boat. It looks like a speedboat, but I'm not sure if how fast it goes. This is by Original Center. Does exactly what it says. Uh, w, A, and D to control. So let's go ahead and give this thing a try. Look at how small this thing is. It's awesome. I love the design of this. Let's hope that it works as well as it looks. All right, and go. All right, this is pretty good. This is a decent... Whoa, it turns really fast. This is a decent speed. I wish it could go a little bit faster, which I'm wondering. Because we got an electric engine. Let's move these up a little bit and see if this makes us go faster. Oh, yeah, there we go. So we can adjust the speed pretty well. Now, this is a nice... This is a nice speed. I like this. Okay, so over... We have the... Um, let me show you what I built over here. Or not what I built, but what I assembled over here from what you guys built. Okay, so here we go. Over here is the center tile. This is the airport that we were using in all of our previous episodes. And what I... What I did design-wise was over here in this general direction, I have more of like the civilization areas because I feel like the airport is usually like the metro hub of cities. So there's a lot of there's a lot of uh, civilization usually gathered around or iso not isolated, but um, focused around the airport. So I made all of those types of tiles near the airport here. So if we go in this direction, you can see we have the apartment complex over here. This is like the collapsed uh, skyscraper and like town right there. We've got um, the collapsed highway right here as well, which I think is the collapsed highway part of that. I think it is part of that. And then if we go further over here, actually, what is this one over here? Is this also part of it? I think this might be like a bunker. Yeah, that's that's one of the bunkers. Um, but then over here. We have, I think, a tile that I forgot to look at before, which is another underwater, like, town area. You can see we have all these different types of buildings. Really cool-looking types of buildings. Like, this is like a suburb. This is really cool. And the buildings are just out of the water, which actually makes some good spots to, like, dock, and uh, you can stand on the roofs. But look at the little yard. It's a nice little yard there with benches and everything. And then next to this tile... Oh, is this a playground? I don't know what that is. But then next to this tile, we have the collapsed uh, tunnel and road here. So, yeah, I kind of intentionally put all of those things right next to each other. And over here we have... I don't know why I put the octopus over here. I think it's, it was mostly because it was a nice open underwater tile. And we needed some open underwater space uh, to get the airport over here. Okay, over here we have the the cool yin, yin yang island, which was just it's a really clever idea for an island. All right, let's go ahead and park over on this one. Now the reason I chose this island here was because it is a really big open area to build something. So I thought it might be nice to have a nice big island that has a lot of room to build some things on it. So you can see we get like a forest, not a forest, but a little sec patch of trees and stuff. In the middle of the island, we get a nice sandy area on the edges of the island. And yeah, I figured this might be a nice island where we can build like a survivable 
uh, like a, a little survival community. Like we can start building like shacks and stuff here, with survival items and things like that. So if you're looking to build creations that are not vehicles, that's actually, I really want to have some of that stuff in this world. Think about how this island looks here, kind of like stranded on a, on a jungle island. This would be a nice place to start building some shacks and stuff, or just think about what's, what people surviving who are stranded on the island, what kind of stuff will they have made. So what I've really been liking what, and seeing with a lot of the creations so far is um, some of you have been going with the idea that since this is a flooded world and people are, like a lot of people might be stranded or just trying to survive, a lot of you have been building things that look like they've been assembled from just parts you would find in a flooded world like this. So I like that idea. So for those of you who want to create more vehicles and stuff, that kind of idea is uh, really attractive for this kind of world. I think it fits the I think it fits the world and the theme very, very well when your things are built to look like they've been assembled from parts that you might find out on the ocean. So let's see if I can find one of those actually. All right, so here's one of them. It's kind of like a scrap raft. So this is a survivor's raft by Gibbs, made from scrap barrels, wood, and a few uh, parts of a long wrecked plane. It's slow, but its carrying capacity makes it very useful for anyone who's stranded in the middle of nowhere. Just be sure not to fire the spud guns too much. You don't want to waste your food. Haha, <laughs> that's clever because the spud guns shoot potatoes. All right, so let's spawn this thing in. Let's see how it floats. All right, well, he was not lying when he said that this thing is slow, and I've even pumped the engine up to max, so I think this is pure um, propeller power. Like, it's not... These aren't the thruster propellers from, like, the water mod or the buoyancy mod. These are actually wings from the wing mod. See, the engine is the only thing powering these things. So, uh, this thing is very slow, and we even got... We can... We have to pull a lever to fire the spud guns, which is actually pretty cool. So yeah, this is visually, aesthetically, this is what is kind of attractive to me. It's kind of just like assembled from scrap. So it's really believable that it's just uh, like stuff that they found floating out in the ocean while they were stranded on the island. And this is what they've had to build in order to just get off the island. So let's spawn in some more stuff though. I, I like I like the idea that, you know, there's still some boats that have survived, like normal looking boats and normal looking things. Like we could probably have some normal looking cars on the islands as well, if there's a island that can accommodate cars and things like that. But um, let's see some more boats because the theme of this episode is boats. All right, so this is apparently some type of steamboat. Let's check this out. This is by Newt. All right, take a look at this. It looks like it's uh, one of those paddle boat things. So let's find out where the seat is. Is that attached to the seat? Yeah, it's attached to the seat. All right, and go. I don't know what that does. All right, go. <laughs> it's WASD controlled. Okay. That's cool. This is a cool boat. I like the shape of this boat a lot. I like the way that it works. And this also gives us some room to like store things on it as well. All right, what's the switch do? I don't quite understand what the switch is doing. It's hooked up to this controller and this controller is not hooked up to anything. No bearing is connected. Okay, then. Oh, this is a switch. Oh, that closes the floor panel. All right. So, yeah, that's just, uh, that's a switch that doesn't hook up to anything. All right. But yeah, we got our own paddle boat here. All right, let's, um, let's go over to... All right, I'm going to go over to one of these r underwater rocks, and we're going to actually use this to spawn in another creation because I think we'll have enough altitude to reach the surface pretty well. Yeah, this looks pretty good right here. Oh yeah, look at that. This shouldn't be a problem at all. Oh, except for the fact that we can't spawn... Oh, here we go. There's a spot. <laughs> Alright, check this out. I don't know if this is fully functioning or not, but this is a, a U-boat by Jung Kong. So let's see if this thing even floats. Oh boy. You know, it might be better if we're on like a deeper section. All right, I don't know if this thing is gonna float or not. Here we go. Is this thing even supposed to float? Maybe we gotta get inside and maybe we can activate some type of buoyancy because I don't know how we're supposed to control this thing. It looks like the driver's seat is right there, but how do we get, we probably have to get in through that top hatch there. Let's go ahead and get on top of this thing. I mean, the design of this thing looks great. I just don't know if it has any functionality or not. What about this? Can I control this from up here? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Are we tilting? 
Uh-oh. Uh-oh. This isn't good. This isn't good. All right, let's see if we can get inside here. All right, we're falling down. We're in. And it looks like there's this... What does this button do? Oh. That's useful. All right, let's get in the seat. We have one button. All right, well, it turns on the thing. It looks like it has control, but it, it it doesn't float. Is it supposed to float? I don't even see any, like, I don't know if there's any buoyancy parts on this thing. Now, I'm just going to, just just out of curiosity, I'm going to put a water activator on it and see if it affects things. There it goes. There goes the U-boat. Where are you going? So it looks like it just needs a little bit of love. It just might might need some drag blocks and uh, a, a water activator. Apparently, it needs as well. But uh, was that in the description? It didn't have a description. But uh, that's a it, it. It actually does float if you put water activator on it. So that that's good. At, le at least it works. <laughs> All right, let's go ahead and spawn in one more. And, uh, let's hope that it'll allow us to traverse the rest of this, or some more of this area. We're not going to explore the whole thing just yet. We want to save that for some future episodes. All right, so this is apparently a car boat plane by Skylander Master. I don't know what the controls are going to be like. Or, uh-oh, uh-oh, hold on, hold on. I got to get inside of this thing. All right, so there's the driver's seat. Ready? Go, go, go. Okay, let's see how the boat function Go. Oh, no, don't, don't. All right, we're a boat. We're a boat. We're boating. There we go. We're boating. All right, there's yaw. Okay. Um, trying to figure out how everything else works. Okay, the wings are down. It actually seems to help us boat as well. What's number two do? Okay, so that's going to be pitch. That's going to be confusing. All right, I'm trying to take off. I don't know if I'm doing it right. I feel like this would be the way to take off, just angling the wings upwards, but, uh... It's not working quite yet. Oh, okay, that works if we roll. Roll works, but, um... The lift is not working. I don't know how to drive this thing. Oh, no. <laughs> There's, like, the tiniest little obstacle. We had all of this open ocean, and we hit the single antenna. Of course. Of course. All right, let's try this again. We're gonna try to take off. I'm pressing all kinds of buttons here in an attempt to do this. <gasps> Nailed it. Nailed it. All right, taking off is not the easiest thing on this, to be honest. It is not the easiest thing to do. Turning looks like it's reversed, too. All right, let's see if we can try this again. All right, so let's pitch our wings up. Let's hold number six. And at the same time, try to... Pitch up. Okay. All right. I feel like there's not enough thrust. I feel like there's not enough thrust. Ugh. Well, the car part works and the boat part works, but the uh, the plane part it needs a li little bit of adjustments. <laughs> it looks really cool though. I like the way that the wings kind of come up like that. That's really nice. Okay, so I want to know from you guys, uh, what kind of creations do you want to see in the flooded world? What would you like to see? on these islands or even underwater. I know some of you have made like shipwrecks and stuff. So things in like fish. Oh, we should probably look at fish or something. You know what? Let's try that. We're going to go with fish for the next episode. So um, try to make some fish that can swim around in the water, whether or not we're driving them. I don't know. They could be AI fish. They could be not AI fish. But uh, I think that might be a cool theme for the next episode. I'm going to focus on fish based creations. And if we don't have enough, then I'll do whatever fish based creations we have. And then something else. I don't know. But leave the comments down below on what you'd like to see for future episodes. Because that'll give me an idea of what kind of themes to uh, to set for the future episodes. Let me know which of the creations we looked at today was your favorite as well. This has been Scrapman, and I'll see you next time. Bye. <laughs>